Hey, Vida Nation. Hey. How are you? What's up, guys? I'm going to say hello to Portales, New Mexico listeners. Hello to everybody that's awesome. found us there. Floyd Hewen, I think it is, um, that is incarcerated and has a brother, possibly in Gib Lewis, that's name is James. Um, he wants to say hello to you. So I hope that you're watching. Um, if if you have a brother named Floyd, he's saying hello. Alex Yalda, I think it, the name is from Delano, California. Um, I wanted to say, I think Michael's may be getting some incentivized programs. Wow. Um, wow. I've got yeah. a few That's letters. Awesome. So I'm really excited about that. You guys, if you're getting incentivized programs, um, talking about it or got it okayed already in any Texas unit, please tell us um, yeah. because we want to share that news with others that they can be encouraged that they may get it in their unit as well. And I'm believing God that every unit is going to have incentivized Amen. programs right. and maybe cool. possibly some incentivized whole prisons Come and on. wings or something like that. So, you know, uh, we'll grow um, a little at a time or maybe not, maybe a lot at a time. All right. <laughs> um, Telford unit is absolutely possibly on its way to making some changes. It's been okay. Awesome. I think by the warden, um, you know, just some little changes of free world mattresses and um, stuff for the incentivized part of it. I don't, I'm not sure they didn't say whether it was G4s, 5s or whoever, whoever it is, but they are talking about doing that and they will have to have often and when they do this, they have to have donations from the free world, from churches, right. wow. volunteers, you know, people like that. So, um, you know, if you're watching and, and you have a church that could m maybe make some of these donations, why don't you contact, you know, Telford Unit or, you know, these different units, Michael's Unit, and find out what you can do if you want to do something for them, okay? Wow. Um, wow. Let me see. Tony Daniels, hello to you at All Red. And I wanted to tell the rest of you guys, everybody, everybody, look for us on Securus, the am. app. Go to the app and touch it. I guess it's a podcast app on Securus. And then you have to, I think, type in Real Vida TV. Right. And you should be able to find us there on video as well as Real Vida podcast, which is audio. And you'll have at least 40 there that were on radio, um, including, you know, Brian T, uh, Andy Minio, uh, lots of, of interviews and things yeah. like that. I mean, lots of things right. that we don't have on video that was, you know, we were on radio for three years before video. So we have a lot of those. We haven't even been able to ever convert all of wow. those yeah. because we, we haven't had time. So wow. yeah. a year ago, we started on video podcast and we were never a, able to go back and finish out the radio conversions. Right. So, but we're still putting out content. So don't complain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Boyd Unit, you guys. Yeah. We went to Boyd Unit. Ada, little Dora was sick. Oh, I call, okay. I do call Ada Dora the Explorer, right? Because <laughs> she is. It's so cute. She she actually has a little backpack like Dora that she wears. And um, she explores. Yeah, she does. All yeah. over the world. <laughs> and yeah, so, exactly. uh, you know, it's, it's cute. It's and so I call her that. But I tried to refrain from doing that um, on podcast. She said, I don't mind. I said, good. And, um, <laughs> and because she's such a Dora. And she explores for God. And I really like that. Amen. Anyway, right. so Boyd Unit was great. She didn't get to go because she was sick, um, but she didn't get to go to Boyd Unit. But it it was it was it crazy. Was, yeah, great. Yes, right. and and you know somebody mm -hmm. asked us. Um, I don't know. Was he a field minister? He said, "How does this compare to the other units?" Yeah, and right. we were like, "It's it was just as great yeah. as all the other yeah. units." Yeah. But listen to me, listen, Linda, because if it was just one person. Yes. You know, it don't have to be a packed house. It, it is a packed house. Um, they had to turn guys away. And we're so sorry for those that you had to turn away. We absolutely will go back to, to Boyd Unit to get what we missed. And um, yes, you know, we'll do two services for the general pop and to go get the G4s that we didn't get to get. Um, please don't be discouraged. We love you so much. Um, we did get to go see this. Like there's only like seven seggers or whatever. Yeah. We got to wow. go back there. Um, please. Don't forget them. You field ministers, those of you that can go back to ADSEG, you only got seven of them. Please yeah. get to them. Do not forget them. Um, there's a guy back there from Honduras. Please tell Honduras that I said hello and that we love him so much. Um, I hope that he can get some... Um, he, he didn't have earphones for his tablet. I mm -hmm. hope he can get some of those soon so that he can watch. Um, the, you know, they're already back there alone. They need those headphones. Um, yeah. Okay, so anyway, Boyd Unit was great, and you got some yes, shout-outs for them. Yes, I have some shout-outs. I just want to shout-out Chaplain Jerry West, who was 
an amazing host, a wonderful man of God who really loves the men uh, entrusted to him. He was just so great, was with us all day. Uh, And we want to just also thank Senior Warden Michael Groover, who really uh, went out of their way, the the staff, the administration, everybody that we had contact with was so nice and so helpful. Uh, And there was a lot. I mean, we went all over that unit. We went to the G4s. We didn't get to meet the warden there. No, we didn't get Um, to meet him. Um, uh, You know, but we went to G4s. We went to G2 dorm. And then we had a big service. And they authorized, I think, max capacity. And so we just so appreciative of all that. Uh, Now, I have a partial list of some shout outs because their ministry team is about 80 deep. Come on. It may be the biggest (laughs) ministry team I've ever seen on any unit. And they're a thousand man unit. Um, So it's, it's bigger than Clement's unit probably. Uh, but th- this is a partial list we were given. Jake Strickland is a field minister, uh, Jarrett Hampton, Artemis Smith, Gary Everett, and Julio Medina. They have five field ministers, wow. and we got to meet all those guys. They have some great life coaches there. Troy Reed, Herman. Uh, oh, Jesus, help me. I cannot read the the apellido. Uh, Herman, I think is his name, and I can't G. read your last name. Same I'm sorry, G. bro. It's Herman, Herman G. G. What's up, G? Love you, bro. <laughs> uh, and then Marco Oliva, and he goes by Polo, of course, because Marco... Polo. Polo, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sound team, uh, Jeremy Azell, Steve Lucio, Ronnie Chambers, Ledrick Mackey, and Tony G, the drummer. Uh, he's the only one that got his uh, his instrument on there. Faith-based mentors, Johnny Quesada, James Barlow, Toby, uh, Toby D., Whoever wrote down this list of names. <laughs> and then the rap team, Juan Lauderdale, Cesar Ramirez, Michael uh, Jamerson, Ricky Jenkins, Toby Downley, and Mike Sanders. Wow. Yeah. So I know Samantha has another list of people in her Bible. She's not here today. Um, we had church today at Carl with Carl, you know, that was really good. And yeah. um, we were at Boyd Unit all day, got home late. We were so exhausted and tired. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and, and in fact, you know, my husband is going to give some updates um, in a minute. In a, in a little bit here on Israel, lots going on, a uh, lots going on everywhere. Right. You know, the the fish are swimming in circles until they die in Florida. Wow, wow. that's happening right now. Uh, bridges have been knocked down and out. Um, all of a sudden, um, yeah. co- coincidentally, bridges are just being taken out um, in different places. Um, things are happening uh, big in Israel with war. Yes, right wow. with Iran and those kind of things, and so we're gonna we're gonna give some updates on that. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say let's go ahead and take a break, a music break right here okay. with some new music um, that Ada introduced me to, and then we'll be right back. We are back. And we were talking about Boyd Unit, but I have a little more to say, right? Because we got to do something there that we don't normally do. They took right. us to the faith based. What is it called? A dorm? Faith-based yeah, dorm. A yeah. faith-based dorm. dorm. You yeah. know, I had it seen like that. Of course, there's, they're not in, in, in the actual cells. They're in yeah. the, cubicles kind of. Yeah. Cubicle kind of looking M-dorm. things, yeah. right? And so we went there and, um, you know, God gave me a message. And, 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 it's, and I seen later like how appropriate that was. That was the only place that we talked about it um, was there in Boyd Unit. And it was on being tired and weary and wore out. Um, depleted and debilitated and spent, you know, being spent. And it was, you know, specifically to, to the Christian, you know, we, we all get wore out and, and leadership especially. And so I want to take a look just a little bit at first Kings chapter 19, where it's talking about Elijah and, you know, take for homework. Those of you that, that know and love the word of God or just learning and want to learn, I want you to read a little about a, a bit about Elijah and all the miracles that he had and God used him in such a great way. Um, you know, at the last of it here in chapter 18, he's there's 450 false prophets of Baal. And they're saying that their God is the real God. And he says, let's just, let's just have a showdown right now. Right. right? 
And so, you know, he's like, you, call, you go call, call on your God first. And the way they did it, of course, they cut themselves. Um, you know, they're crying out to their God. And, you know, whoever's God answers by fire, their God would not answer. And Elijah's a little bit smart mouth, right? <laughs> and he's like, perhaps he's asleep. Cry louder, right? You know, he said, yeah. he even said this. So don't blame me if you read the scripture. He's like, perhaps he's relieving himself somewhere. <laughs> Come on. Um, oh, you know, he like, he, yeah. and he, he just yeah. goes on. And then when it comes time for our God, the true one, only God, yeah. he says, you know what? What I'm so confident in who my father is. Pour water on it. Yeah. Right. Pour wow. more water on it. Pour on. more water on it. And, they, and, and then when God answers with his one call, he licks up even the water yeah, and it's okay. gone. Okay. So you're on a high. So have you ever been, and I know as a Christian, I'm talking to some Christians even right now and some leadership. Yes. Have you ever been on such a high that you think nothing could take me down? Right. Bring me Goliath right now. I'll cut his head off. Right. Come on. And you're like, I'm never going to doubt God again. Have you, uh, Chris, uh -huh. Jeremy, Ada, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you ever thought God has mm -hmm. done something so big that you're like, I am never right. going to doubt God again. Right. I am never going to fear again. Yeah. I'm never going to back down again. You know, I am yes. going to go forward. And from this day forward, I am going to be a powerhouse. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop me. And then life happens tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right. And something brings you down, mm. you know, usually people, Come because on. the devil works through people the way right. God works through people. So this is exactly what happened. So, so now, you know, Ahab and Jezebel are in charge when this happens. And we're in chapter 19. And when Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. She said, may God, the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you have killed them. Yeah. And it shook fear in him. She was a wicked woman. To me, she looks like Cruella in my mind, you know, <laughs> yeah. Cru yeah. Cruella yeah. DeVille who right. went after the right. Dalmatian puppies. Yeah. Right? Because she's so wicked. And so Cruella spoke mm. and it struck some fear in his heart. And so Elijah was afraid after all God had done in verse three and he fled for his life. Mm. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. Like he was like suicidal. Like I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. Like wow. kill me. Take me, God. I've had enough. I'm tired of dealing with people. I'm tired of dealing with Jeze Jezebels and Cruellas. Like, right. it's like I've already dealt with one God. Like, I mean, have you ever, like, I, I, I've had 35 years of ministry, 34, 35 years of ministry now, and I've met a lot of Cruellas, right? Yeah. And I think I've already been there and done that and got the t shirt, mm -hmm. Jesus. <laughs> I, I don't need any more of that the carnival, right? That circus. I, I don't need any more drama. Right. Come on. And listen. And so that's what God was talking about yesterday. He was saying, some of you getting so tired of the drama. And I, and I yeah. know, like, right. hey, Chris, you lived there. Mm -hmm. You lived in prison. Was there any drama in the chapel? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> bit of drama, right? And, um, and you know, Jeremy we will go in and he'll say, he'll talk about something that, that happens behind the walls and in the chapel. And he's like, I'm sure it's not here though, right? right. It's, it's not right. here. Right. Hofield, right. of course it's not here. Right. Vito, right. right? Of course not. But this is life. Right. Right. And, and what concerns me is, that when we're in there, or people write letters, or when we're in there, you know, when we were going into Beto, let's say, people would say, it's just this prison drama. Like, right. the, it's just this prison, you know, ministry here. It, it's not. Right. It's not just in prison that this happens. No, it's not. It's all over. And that's why they did it to Jesus, right. the right. son of God, yeah. right? They weren't yeah. scared to put him down, to slander him, to, to get him killed, you guys. I mean, this yeah. was Jesus. So what about us as servants? Come on. How are yeah. we going to be better? How are we going to be more? Right. But I, I do know it's tiring, right? I know I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm older, right? I'm, I've got arthritis. I, I'm tired. And listen, when yeah. you're tired and you're exhausted, you're discouraged easier. Mm, it's true. You know, even as I got 
I got older and my son, one of his last times home, um, I was so different, right? In that area, he was like, mom, where's your fight? Like what happened to you? You know, you would never have let such and such go on before, you know? And it's true. You start letting things happen. I remember seeing some of my older friends that were moms of, you know, young adults and teenagers, older teenagers. And I thought, how could they let that happen? Why would they not be trying to stop that or do something or go somewhere until I got older? Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. I I begin to understand more Mm -hmm. of how you get tired. Right. Wow. But the danger of being tired is that you'll give up two minutes, one second before you could have won that battle. Right. You'll turn back when God told you to move forward. Right. 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 The devil, of course, he's trying to discourage you. And he first makes sure that you're tired. And then he brings yet another thing. It's like that that old song that Sam and I sang when it's like, everything that could go wrong, all went wrong at one time. Wow, yeah. right? So much wow. pressure fell on me. I thought I was going to lose my mind, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I, Lord, I know you want to mm. see if I can hold on through these trials, but I mm. need you to lift this load because I right. can't take it no more, right? That's right. why everybody loved that song. We relate, you yes. know, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance, right? Come on. And so, you know, I mean, I get tired too. And, and so he had had enough and he said, take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and he slept under a broom tree and he, as he was sleeping and an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. Mm. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again because he needed some rest. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him, get up and eat some yeah. more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. See, that's the problem that happens is we don't take the time to eat the word of God. We're so busy yeah. feeding other people. Wow. And then we're wondering why we're tired, but we haven't ate. And it, it and we and we mean well, right? We mean well. Yeah. Um, so whatever the reason is that you're tired, let me give you some some you know reasons. Brett and Misty just had a baby, right? And right. they've already got a little guy and they've right. got two twins, adolescents. And two teenagers. And two teenagers. <laughs> I'm tired just, God bless them. just thinking about it. Just, yeah. about it. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, just that one baby will tire you out. Right. Every time you try to put that newborn down and it screams again and it's like your 15th time. Yeah. Oh, you're like, sometimes what was I thinking I was asking for when I had this baby, you know? Mm. Um, because you're so tired. It'll make you get grouchy at each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you you are arguing about the smallest things, you know, you didn't pick up your sock, you know, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> um, you're just so tired. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, throwing some examples out there, problems at home. Yeah. And then you go to the chapel and then there's some drama and you're like, you know what? I just don't need any more of these jokes, right? right? Mm, I, yeah. I don't need this. I, I don't want any more of this. And so every single person absolutely mm. gets tired. So I'm I'm going to make Ada go ahead and, and jump oh. in right now because, you know, she's in ministry. Um, you know, she's mostly spent time in, in, in music ministry and rapper ministry. Um, but tell us about that. Did you ever get tired? And were you surprised when you came into because you had been in the secular world and rap mm. and you already knew some because you're a pastor's kid. So, you know, the drama that happens in churches. Yeah. Yeah. So you already had that. And now you came into ministry into the rap industry. What happened? What? I think my biggest, like, I mean, I got tired like every month, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah. but I think my hardest or the, what made me most tired or what continues to make me tired is when I look at, how much fight you have inside competition like competition mm-hmm. so like it's like okay I'm, I'm i'm trying to win souls for the kingdom i i want to live right but then i also have to like walk on eggshells because right. there are all these yeah you know politics and yes yeah, this and you know so yes. and so has been on top for five years and yeah. you know you gotta bow down because if you don't then mm. you know and all these things or you know you gotta walk this way and say this because and it's like yo i just want to be me like can i just right. do what god's called me to do like it's yeah. why do why does it have to be about someone else you know right. and and so yeah i think that's been my biggest yeah so you said something to me and I, I asked you today, like, would you be willing to share that on the air? And you know, pretty transparent. So yeah. you said, okay, you had, you had told me this particular sentence about, you know, you came into the Christian rap industry and 
it was should, it should have been different from the world, but it it wasn't because like people were so into competition, and you were ready to just win souls, and you heard. Let's take a look at what so and so is doing because they are doing well. And then what else did they say? Yeah, like let's take whatever they're doing and do it better. Right. Or mm-hmm. what's like? Let's listen to secular. My biggest. This was crazy for me. Like, what's the secular world doing? Let's copy them but make yeah. it for Jesus. And I'm like, well, I thought we had like the everlasting fountain of creativity. Right. Like right. we could just the reach. The creator of the universe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, yeah. Like, w- mm-hmm. don't we talk to him? Like the way we right. read his word, you know? And, yeah. and that's what you said about, you know, eating, making sure we're eating. Like when we stop eating, yeah. then we have to find in other places, you know, a way to kind of right. reproduce <laughs> this success, this idea yeah. of yeah. success, right. you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, if I'm connected to God and I'm in the anointing yeah. he's given me, Come then on. I don't have to compete with you because Amen. I'm walking my purpose. I would say yeah. this even, okay? So so if I can give you an example of this, if if you're a Christian, I'm not even saying you got to be a field minister or, or inmate pastor or whoever, um, you're a Christian and you're you're talking to somebody who doesn't know the Lord and they're asking you questions. Have you ever been really surprised at what comes out of your own mouth? And you're like, wow, that's pretty good. Because it's the <laughs> yeah, spirit yeah. of God and it's not yeah. you. Right. And exactly. God gives you this example in that moment that is yes. so on time. And you're yep. you're learning even more as you're teaching them yes, because, right. because God is the creator and he's going to mm. use you. If you're going to go to him, he's going to flow through you. Yes. And so you don't have to imitate anybody else. So that was like something, you you know, because when, you know, I had many, many, many of these situations, I am very old and um, I've been in the ministry for 34 years. And so um, I shared on a podcast, I can't remember which one it was, um, maybe misdemeanors and felonies, I'm not sure. But I had shared how when I was like 25 years old and I first went into a prison and there was this young girl, I'd had a dream before I went in that I see her and she's got the little, a little snake. And it's got wings and she throws it at me. And as it comes at me, it's growing longer and fatter, wow. longer and fatter, longer and fatter. And I get in the house, I slam the door and it hits the door right in time and it falls. I was about to go into my first prison, but I'm from Texas. So I was going in Ohio. And I tell the girl that travels with me and my husband, I, I tell about the dream. And I'm like, it's so weird. I haven't seen this girl since she was 11 years old and I was like 16, 17. Wow. So why am I dreaming about her? Well, I go to this prison for the first time and guess who's there, right? Wow. And so, so yeah, so the first day they invite us, her and all her aunts and cousins and everybody's there, you know, <laughs> and they invite us, hey, we go to McDonald's afterwards. You want to go? And I'm, I'm like, sure. So we go eat with them. But the reaction from the presence of God, from relaying the message of God that I shared that day was so big that a little jealousy began. Mm. And so it began to grow. And before you know it, I'm just making the long story short, you'll have to go watch that podcast. Um, They were demanding that the leader kick us out. They said, either choose between Eve and us. If if Eve goes with you, we will not go anymore. And she's from Texas. So they, she picked them because she said, they're from Ohio and you're going back and I'll be left with nothing. And this girl sings too. Okay. So this girl sings too. So I had certain tracks, you know, even like we got now, people love Take Me to the King. Me and Sam are almost going to sing that at every single unit and every yeah. single pod because they want to hear. They want to hear, G- take me to the wheel. Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, take, take the, the wheel. wheel. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. They want to hear that from Sam. Right. Um, we think that... Um, Folsom prison is going to be going to be Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. They're going to want to hear. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So you know, they want to hear these certain songs. Like they want to hear emotional. Right, we haven't right. done that yet because we didn't have the track. But the, from Ada, they want to hear emotional, yeah. and everybody is picking that lottery. You know, I feel yeah. like I just want. Like, yeah. Everybody's saying right. that everywhere we go. Yeah. They got their favorites. You know. Come on. And so anyway, I had these specific tracks. You know that I would sing a lot, like about seven of them. That young lady, and she sang better than me. And I got no problem with that. She went and bought every single soundtrack I had because she thought the move of God was in the soundtrack I had. Not not realizing you can have your own. You don't have to imitate me, right? You don't have to do that. If you would go to God, he'll give you your own. There's only one you, your unique story, your unique way, your unique, I mean, the parable Anointing. of the virgins. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. my yeah. goodness. Go buy oil for yourself. David there's enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Come there's on. a reason why David defeated Goliath with his own right. method. Come on. Yes. Was the, sto- the five yeah. stones, right? It, Saul's armor was available. Yes. Right. But he knew that 
he wasn't going to win wearing yeah. that. Right. So why try? Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't around for her singing my songs. I, I don't know what it, it kind of annoyed me or not, you know, because it's a little annoying when, you know, when you're a child. Yeah. Do you remember? I don't know. Did I don't know if your generation did this, but we I apparently had nothing to do. So <laughs> when we were young, um, sometimes there were kids that didn't like you. And, you know, say you were at church Sunday school and um, you yawned. So they yawned. And oh, you yeah. thought you looked at them and you thought, did they just copy me? <laughs> right. And so so you 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 clapped your hands. So they clapped their hands. So you turned around. So they turned around and then you like realize. And it's just it's just annoying. Yeah. Right. You know, right. it's you. OK, yeah. so you've right. experienced that. OK, so it's yeah. just annoying. You know, um, I don't know if I would have been annoyed or not. You know, I, I didn't know. I found out years later that she had gotten every single soundtrack that I I had done because, you know, later on, I didn't go back to that unit because, of course, they chose them. And then she continued singing my songs, <laughs> <laughs> which was OK. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, and it's not so much that either to me. My husband always tells me because it happens to me a lot. Um, my husband always tells me flattery. Is the imitation best. is mm-hmm. the most sincere yeah. form of okay. flattery. Yeah. Imitation is the most sincere. Ah. Yeah, no, no. That's the same. It's just the same. I don't know yeah. if it's but sincere. But he'll say that when people <laughs> imitate what I do or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and and so I don't, I don't, I don't so much mind that, and I really don't have time to pay to pay attention to it um, because I'm so busy downloading from God myself with right. His creative ideas. Um, but it's like a fly, though. It's a, it's a little fly, but it's nagging. You know, maybe, it's like- maybe I don't know so much about that. What I do mind is the attack on my life. Yeah. To to go so much so hard trying to be me that you go I'm gonna take you out so I can do what you do you know wow it, that's shocking and I've and I've had that happen right a lot and so that gets tiring and you get I want to I automatically want to run away from that kind of thing yeah. I automatically want to go I'm out you can have it you can have it but. You know, like in, in, in right now, say in, in the prisoner ministry, I can't do that. You know, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. Um, God has called us to this, right? Yes. And we are, we're going to have to do what he's called us to do. And I'm, Amen. I'm not going to lose any lives. Mm. I was just thinking about you know? David and Absalom, you know, Absalom wanted to be David so bad. He wanted to be yeah. his father right. and he tried to take his but he spot. he could have gone to God. He could have gone he to God, and he, he he could have eventually been king. You know, uh, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. depending on how things played out. But uh, you know, he wanted to to kill his father, and his father didn't want to fight his son, but he had to do what God had called eventually, him to do for the sake of the people. Eventually, yes. Oh yes. my goodness! And so, yeah. So he kept telling him, "You need to get up and eat." Yeah. If you don't eat, yeah. you're not going to be able to do this. You need to fill yourself with God. Look. Look, I got this encouragement because we get it. We, we're we one body of Christ. Yeah. And I was so encouraged by by um, Boyd unit. I really was. God knows what we need when we need it. Yes. I was so encouraged by the leadership. It was so crazy because there are those units that we went in every, every week, even every week, that we, you know, got to intermingle with them and, and know them a lot better. And, um, but when we go to like, New new Stringfellow Boyd, all these units. Gory. It's yeah. like automatic yeah. family. Yeah. It's right. a, their family. It's like yeah. You there's feel there's it. the right. connection is already there. We are already one. Knit together. You yeah. know, in the body of Christ. It's it's amazing. And and God sends words so many times to us from from inmates. Yes. Right. From those that are incarcerated, I should say. Um, and so I got a word like maybe a week and a half ago from somebody. And I'm going to read a portion of this letter. Moving forward, it says, listen to this. One time my superintendents took us pastors on a deer lease. They were in training to be pastors. It was a pastoral retreat. I will never forget what happened that weekend. We were at dusk dawn sitting high in a deer stand with rifles with scopes. Out of nowhere, a herd of bucks comes out of the woods. There were at least 25 to 30 deer. He said to us, look into the scope and locate the buck with the biggest horns. So I took my rifle and located the biggest buck with the biggest horns. He said to us, make sure it is the one with the biggest horns. Then here came the life-changing moment. Mm. He said, those of you who carry the anointing and are serving God's people correctly, this is you. 
No matter how many ministers there are around you, you are the one who has the bullseye on your back. Wow. Then he said, those of you who don't are the other bucks. You have nothing to worry about. <laughs> no one desires to take you out, right? Wow. wow. He said, Real Vida Ministries has the biggest horns. So when people shoot, it is only acknowledging what God is doing through you. It's like water on a duck's back. Just keep pushing and keep doing what you are doing. Wow. wow. And I was wow. like, wow, 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 wow. And at the same time, I wanted to say to him, okay, buddy. Yeah. Let's take your own advice, right? Yeah. Um, too, because, you know, he's he's tired. He was tired, hmm. right? Because no matter who you are, when you're getting attacked, you're tired. So so I want to know, like, who attacks you? So, so I asked Ada a little while ago, and she's like, you know, well, in the rapper world, you know, it's like take— I said, okay, okay, in the rapper world, but let me let me narrow this down. Are, is, is it male rappers that are attacking Ada, or is it female rappers that sometimes— uh, the, the males embrace me. The females <laughs> are like, there's only one spot. Yeah. For the, oh. you know, if there's four people at the table, there's only one girl. So and it gonna it's going to be me, not you. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy yeah. because there wow. actually aren't that many female rappers. And, you know, y'all don't know, um, y'all don't really know, um, you know, Ada very well because she is extremely well known in all the Hispanic, right. Latino, you know, places. And that's a big, big number. Um, and there are, not so we're talking about there are f- few only women mm-hmm. rappers and even fewer Hispanic women rappers. And even fewer bilingual. Wow. Like I can Goodness do both. Gracious. Right. Yes. Praise God. So you know, that I, makes I you have both. some big horns. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, okay, all eyes on Ada. We're taking her out, oh, you know? My goodness. And so, you know, so, you know, yeah. when we met and um, we talked, we found so many things, so much likeness mm-hmm. in our stories that, you know, I am also Dora the Explorer. And, um, <laughs> you know, and I also have always had the heart, you know, when I don't even hardly have food to be Mm -hmm. feeding those who don't have. And, um, you know, I mean, you know, just so many likenesses in our ministry. So I understood it, you know, and you know what else, you know, I, I understood the, the, the carefulness and the walls, Ada, Ada walls, me too. So we're like, yeah, you know, (laughs) Are, are we okay? Because yeah. we're both women here, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Are we right? Right? You know what I mean? And yeah. Um, yeah. I, I understood, and and I think, you know, that it even takes that, that understanding and those scars and those wounds that I already I had already been through to understand you and to be patient and to be careful and say it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. It, it's safe. And I, I'm not going to prove myself to you. Yeah. I, I, w- I want you to know that it's okay that you don't trust all the way and yeah. that you can take your time and you can take one step at a time, wow. yeah. you know? So, so, you know, you guys, I know y'all are relating to this in there and in the faith-based wing dorm over there. Um, that's something that we talked about. I said, you know, who hates you? Mm. Um, you know, if you're a guitar player, who is the one that hates you on the worship team? Right. The other guitar, the other guitar player. Guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when y'all could be jamming together and right, showing yeah. each other things, you know, instead right. it's the other one that does the same thing that you oh, do. Man. So, you know, like where's Real Vida's hate going to come from, okay. right? You know, that happens all the time, um, but we got to get up. And so I want to encourage you guys, you're not alone. Right. Yeah. It happens to everybody. And if you leave, and if you give up because you're tired and you're exhausted, who's going to be left? Oh, yeah. Right. Right. If every good minister goes, then I'm out and you can have it. That's right. exactly what the devil wanted. Right. You got to mm-hmm. get up, you guys. Don't leave the chapel. You know, don't don't leave the ministry. Don't stop talking about Jesus because someone don't like you because they're jealous of you and imitate everything yeah. you do. You know, don't do that. Um, let me see. I, I do want to go to Esther. Let me give you this scripture real quick. You know it already. This is also a great story. And I'm going to give you chapter four, verse 14. If you keep quiet Mm. at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews, for the prisoners, for those around you, for those that are seeking Jesus will arise from somewhere else. But, that isn't the point. If you keep quiet at a time like this, listen, this it, we're in a time like this. Yeah. We're in the Come end. On, we're yeah, where yeah, things are yeah. happening. We're where 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 people are broken and they're hurting. There's there's no time to keep quiet when right. you got the answers yeah. at a time like this. And if you keep quiet 
deliverance will arise from somewhere else. They may not even do it as good as you, but right. it, it, it'll arise from somewhere, but you and your relatives will die. In other words, you and those that you were supposed to reach around you or your family will die spiritually. You right. will die. Sp if you're not fulfilling your purpose, yes. right. you will die spiritually. When David was not fulfilling his, he was a warrior. He was supposed to be on the warrior field. Instead, he was staying home and oops, right. there's Bathsheba. Right. Right. Yeah. He should have never been seeing Bathsheba. Right. But he, should, but he was at home just taking it easy, going, yeah. I'm not going to go to the war today. I'm not going with the drama. I'm right. going to stay home and take it easy today. And that's when he got in the most trouble that led to more trouble, to more trouble, to more trouble. Right. And so you will die spiritually. You will make mistakes. You, you'll go further. You might start drinking again. You might smoke smoking tune again. You might uh -huh. start using some meth again. You you don't know. You're going to be right. sagged up again. You're right. going to go further than you ever dreamt possible yeah. again because you're sitting there. He said, and who knows if or perhaps you were made queen or you were raised up for such, such a, time a time as this. this. Yeah. And God, God has raised us up. God has raised Real Vida up for such a time as this. We ain't going nowhere. Come on. Amen. Come on. God has raised Ada up for such yes. a time as this. Right. You know, she got here a little wounded, a little broken, right? Yep. And she's like, I'll sit in the background. I said, no, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you ain't. She's nice like, try. I'll just sit behind the cameras and I'll just pray for people. I don't even need a rep. Yes, you do. You got a rep. <laughs> like, this and, is and how you, you fight your battles. Come yeah. On. yeah. That's right. I said, you think they're, that you're going to yeah. go in there and they're going to have seen you rap on video and they're not going to go, what's Ada doing sitting yeah, down, right? right? Uh, no, yeah. this is how you fight your battles by fulfilling yeah. your Walking purpose and your ministry. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. And so this is what we've got to continue to do. Yeah. Um, you guys in there be encouraged. You got a scripture, don't you? Yes, yes. I do. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1, uh, 15, it says, It's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, mm. not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. But yeah. that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine. The message about Christ is being preached either Come way. On. So Come on. I, rejoice. Come on. I love that scripture, man, because yes. God, God does remind me of that. And I remind myself of that. Right. Because they they're doing these things. They're, you know, putting me down or they're they're going to more people than they would or different groups or or, or, or you know, they're imitating everything I do or whatever. Um, but you know what? My people are getting more. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. So now they're Come getting on. more music. <laughs> My people are getting more preaching. My yeah. people are getting more, you know, they're getting more of everything. So come yeah. on. What the devil meant for my bad, Turn God has around. turned in for my That's good right. and for yeah. my kids' good. So yeah. I'm okay with that. Just don't hurt them. Yeah. But don't hurt them. I'm not coming <laughs> glued, <laughs> you know, but you know, and so, you know, but listen, the, the best kind of job to do is an inside job. Yeah. Right. You know, David said, he said, if if it had been my enemy yes. that yeah. raised his heel against me, I get that. Right. I expect that. Yeah. But yeah. it was my brother. Yeah. It's the one mm -hmm. I ate with. It's mm -hmm. the one I went to church with. It's the one I, I should be ministering beside. It's the one that should be lifting me up. Yeah. That's the one that raised their heel against me right. and wow. tried to take me out. Yep. That hurts. Yeah. That hurts. But I want you to know that it happens to all of us. And if it don't happen to you, you ain't doing something right. That's right. right. You know? Yeah. So if you if that is happening to you, be encouraged. Yeah. Because you know, the devil wouldn't be messing with you. You must got some big yeah, antlers. Big right. Come on. You, yeah. You're a big come bug. Yeah. yeah. So come on with it and um and bring Jesus to the people, yeah. to the pain, to the brokenness, and bring his healing. Yeah. We're going to take another break and then we'll be right back with the updates. And unless the Lord build the house, then they labor in vain that build it. And we are that house, right? And together we are the, we are God's house. We are the church, amen? Um, we're having church. We should be having church every day. You come fill up at this filling station, and then out there in the jungle, that's where you, you, you open your mouth. Come on, that's where you find those who are hurting and who are broken, amen? We are all one. We are one nation. We are one body of Christ. It don't matter the color of your skin, amen? You better lay the lid on the place, amen? 
world Man, I ain't no different than you I'm just like you, though Call upon the name of the Lord to see what he do, though Watching things from heaven's perspective is a better view, though Jesus is the truth, he's the truth Hey, I'm willing to be misunderstood for the gospel I preach I'm willing to be misunderstood by my partners in peace They might not understand the reason I submitted to Jesus Mr. Preacher in your speak, I hope it's Christ when they see me I bring my Bible with me everywhere You guys are here and y'all ready to worship and y'all could be doing other things, you could be laying in your bunk, you could be at wreck or whatever it is, but you chose to come voluntarily, intentionally worship God. If you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So Lord, we're grateful for Real Vida and Prison Fellowship that have come this way to visit us here at the Glory Unit. Father God, we pray that you would have your way and Lord, that you would touch hearts, move lives, transform. until it is finally fulfilled on the day when Christ Jesus returns.
back. Uh, and so Eve was talking a little bit earlier uh, just about everything that's going on for such a time as this, right? Mm. And we are in that kind of time. You know, we, yes. we've talked on recent podcasts about um, end times headlines and what's going on in the news and the birth pains. And the birth pains are getting more intense. They're getting closer together. And so, you know, again, we don't know timing, but this thing that has happened now that we're going to be talking about today, which is on Saturday, April 13th, while we were in Boyd unit uh, ministering, we came out to our vehicle.
חברים, אזור ו', בבקשה, אזור ו', ירושלים. באמת? יואו! הנה, ים המלח. טוב, בואו ניכנס לרחבה. שומרון ים המלח, חבר'ה. ירושלים. אימא, מה קורה כאן? ואין אזעקות. אין אזעקות, אין כלום. חברים, אזור ו'. מה אתה יודע? תראה יותר כאלה נוסעים, תראה כאלה נוסעים באמת. טוב, זה נהנה עוד אחד, נהנה עוד אחד שם. Okay, guys. Uh, so approximately 300 missiles, drones, cruise missiles were launched by Iran against Israel uh, on Saturday, April 13th, 2024. This was in response, mm -hmm. uh, according to the Islamic Republic of Iran. It was in direct response to the April 1st strike by Israel on the Iranian embassy in Damascus. We talked to you about that on a prior podcast and update in which an IRGC uh, Revolutionary Guard um, commander, the one that's basically over the Syrian operations of Iran, um, he was taken out and five others, I think, uh, in that attack. Uh, so they've been saying for weeks that they were going to respond Uh, some people were beginning to believe that maybe it wasn't going to happen because it had been approximately two weeks and there had not been a response yet. It's been pretty common in the past for Iran to say, okay, we're going to do something. We mean it this time. Right. And then them back away, um, mainly because I, I think there's always been the threat of if you respond to Israel directly, uh, then you're going to get a response directly from Israel. Right. And Israel has nuclear weapons. And, and the U.S., no? No doubt. And, because and we were the, the ally that right. protected and fought. So wow. Well, so since the Iranian um, embassy was struck in Damascus that we talked about, there's been mixed messages coming out of the Biden administration and the White House. There's been the messages, we fully support Israel, we're going to defend Israel. And there's been other messages, they went too far with that strike on the embassy in Damascus, and they shouldn't have done it, and we're not going to back them up. And so there's been this uncertainty uh, going on. So in the past, over, uh, you you know, 40 years, basically, that Iran has uh, become a most vocal critic of Israel, the biggest opponent of Israel in the Middle East and globally. Wow. They have always used their proxies uh, to attack Israel. They've never done it directly. So what happened yesterday, uh, April 13th, was historic because it's the first time they haven't used one of their little puppets around the Middle East that they're supporting financially, given arms and weapons to, given financial support to. It's the first time that they did it directly themselves. Uh, so I want to show you this image here. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. This is the images of uh, the Israeli soldiers, the IDF, leaving southern Gaza. Uh, it was after the humanitarian convoy was struck and seven aid workers were killed. It was in the same week that that happened, that the embassy was struck in Damascus. Both of them were public relations disasters for Israel on the global stage. They've had a lot of diplomatic pressure. And so within a few days of that and the U.S. taking really hard position against Israel that they'd gone too far, you began to see the IDF forces leaving uh, the Gaza Strip. Right. And of course, the Gaza Strip, here's a map Uh, showing the Gaza Strip. Uh, you can see there's a key there. You'll probably have to pause it and, uh, and zoom in if you're one of the, the nerds like me that you want to see. It shows the Gaza Strip. It shows the Gaza Strip portion that are still under Palestinian control. That's the pink. The blue is that is now under Israeli uh, control. And so I want you to understand, because we can't talk about uh, the Iranian strike on April 13th without talking about 
what's going on in Gaza and the Gaza-Hamas war with Israel. Uh, the October 7th attack by Hamas on Israel was 100% financed by, organized by, supported by Iran. Uh, Hamas is one of the biggest proxies for Iran. Uh, and so this war plays into 100% um, what is going on now as far as the direct conflict between Iran and Israel. Right. Uh, here is just uh, a photo of some of the the devastation in the Gaza Strip. Of course, uh, Israel has had to um, go after Hamas. They're trying to root out Hamas. Uh, of course, they're, Hamas is embedded in the Palestinian community. And so there's allegations that up to 20 to 25,000 civilians have been killed. Uh, arguably, approximately 15,000 Hamas militants have been killed and approximately 20 to 30,000 more are still left. So there's a whole army still inside the Gaza Strip right. that Israel hasn't gotten to. And when they went into the Gaza Strip, their purpose was to take down Hamas. Mm. And now because of these public relations issues, mm. they've had to leave without finishing their goal. The two goals were to get the hostages and to get Hamas rid of Hamas. Right. Neither of those goals have been accomplished. They've got some of the hostages back through prisoner exchanges. Uh, we're, they're estimating now that at least 100 of the um, hostages have been killed and there may be 30 or 40 left, um, but they have not been recovered as of today, which is Sunday, April 14th. Here is a map uh, showing all the proxies of Iran. These are the different places where you find their proxies. Uh, there's Iran in dark red, Syria, which is a failed state now. They're completely controlled by Iran. Iraq also a failed state that the United States spent almost 20 years and thousands of lives, servicemen lost to the United States, both killed and uh, disabled, PTSD, decapitated, I mean, uh, very, you know, dismembered from IEDs. Uh, and we pulled out of Iraq and it's now right back to the same state it was in before we went mm. in or perhaps worse. Wow. Because now there's not even a dictator uh, that's running things and trying to keep the peace. It is a pal it is a terrorist free for all mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Iraq now, and it's all supported by Iran because it's just one step closer. You can see on the map to Israel, and then down in Yemen, you heard us talking about the Houthis uh, several programs ago. They are also financed and funded uh, by Iran. Okay, so I'm going to show you this slide now. There's Tom Cruise uh, <laughs> in Jerry Maguire, I think is the name of the movie, mm. saying, show me the money. And, you know, Come the on. truth of the matter is when you want to understand something and you're not really sure you understand, usually it's about the money. I'm yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. In my cases, uh, you know, you frequently find out, okay, so what's going on here? And you find, oh, it's about the money, right? Wow. And so it is absolutely the same way. Why are these people uh, fighting for Iran? Why are they their proxies? Because that's where they get their money. Right. And, of course, they, they share some similar doctrine. Here are Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. Here are um, Hezbollah militants in Lebanon, which is just to the north of Israel. And there they are with rockets pointed at Israel. Here are um, some militants that are in Iraq, the failed state, that are funded by Hamas. Uh, they're aligned with um, uh, they're funded rather by Iran, uh, and they are supported by Iran with weapons. Okay, so for specifics uh, about the attack on April 13th, Iran fired approximately 300 drones, missiles at Israel in the first ever direct attack. Approximately 99% of those uh, were downed. The ones that did hit re didn't really do any damage. This is miraculous. Um, but of course, you'll see in the sub headline on this image that you've got up in front of you right now, Israel and the U.S., and the UK, which is Great Britain, and Jordan all intercepted some of these projectiles. And I just said some really controversial things, if you know anything about history and geopolitics. And we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, at the same time that Iran launched this attack, some of their proxies, Hezbollah, which we just showed you in Lebanon, and the Houthis down in Yemen also launched simultaneous attacks. I am surprised a little bit by this attack, I really expected that when Iran finally pulled the trigger, that it would be an attack that would be overwhelming with 
tens of thousands of rockets and missiles and drones, not 300. Right. Uh, so I have some, yeah. I have some theories about that. Um, you know, this is a test of the emergency yeah. broadcast Come system. On. They're testing uh, Israel's ability to respond, mm-hmm. and they want to diminish their store of interceptor missiles, wow. which I'll get to in just a second. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit. People have talked about the Iron Dome, and some of that video we showed shows the video of the Iron Dome, and it's pretty amazing uh, process where the missiles and the rockets are coming in and coming up from the ground is the interceptor missiles and they meet in the sky. And historically, Israel has about a 95% success rate in intercepting, which is crazy good success rate. Uh, So yesterday, uh, April 13th, to get 99% is uh, unbelievable, honestly. But I did say they had U.S. help and (laughs) U.K. help. So they had two of the greatest military, the greatest military and one of the greatest uh, sophisticated military technology militaries in the world helping. Um, So the Iron Dome is really a lot more than that. I want to tell you a little bit because it's important in a minute. The Iron Dome is is a term that's used for their whole missile defense system, but it really only describes the short-range rockets which is what Hamas usually fires, it's what Hezbollah fires. There's another portion of it called David Sling, which, you know, as a Bible scholar, (laughs) these are really cool names, David Sling. (laughs) Uh, We were just talking about David Sling a few minutes ago, eight of us. And so those are designed for ballistic missiles from anywhere from 60 to 120 miles. And those uh, interceptor missiles for David Slings are produced by um, Israel, a company called Rafael, and the U.S., which is a very famous defense contractor called Raytheon in a joint partnership. It is extremely important that you understand that the interceptor missiles are coming from the United States. Right. Uh, because at some point, the United States is going to split from Israel and Israel is going to stand alone. And when that happens, at some point, they're going to run out of interceptor missiles, which would be a, have been a very different mm-hmm. day yesterday when that happens. There's a third portion of the Iron Dome um, system for long-range missiles, and it went into action yesterday. It was the Arrow 2 and Arrow 3. It's designed to intercept ballistic missiles outside of the Earth's atmosphere, specifically designed with Iran in mind in case one of those missiles they launch at some point has a nuclear warhead attached to it, which we know they're in the process of developing. And so it's designed to intercept at a high altitude. Some of that video Chris probably put up uh, just shows you very close to the ground, they're being intercepted, these rockets. Right. But you don't want to do that when it's a nuclear warhead. You want to get it while it's up in the atmosphere. And so it's designed for safe disposal of any non-conventional warhead. Mm. Uh, It's got a detachable warhead that meets the other warhead up in the atmosphere uh, and blows it up. So that is also produced by Israel and another U.S. defense contractor named Boeing, which has been in the news a lot the last six months for some faulty planes. <laughs> and, and Chris pointed <laughs> out that a lot of that's probably due to the, the airlines not maintaining the planes. But right. Boeing has had a really bad six months. In fact, they yeah. had to lose their CEO uh, because they've had such bad publicity. And when I read Boeing is the one who's <laughs> the, the partner on this, I thought, oh, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> and then, so the fourth part of it that there is in development right now is really cool. Uh, it's called a um, the Iron Beam. It's a laser-based system that right. when it's completed, they're going to shoot a laser for $2 per, per missile and shoot down the missiles, but it's not ready yet. Right now, they rely on interceptor missiles, and many of those come from the United States. Uh, So that's a little bit about the Iron Dome. Sirens were, of course, heard all across Israel, uh, lit up the night sky. Um, You know, we really didn't know what was going to happen. In fact, we were in the truck driving home from Boyd Unit, and I'm driving, and Chris is in the back, and he's giving me updates while we're driving about what's going on. Um, So, you know, it it is interesting, of course, that the U.S. and the U.K. helped shoot down Iranian drones over Jordan, Syria, and Iraq. Two of those are the failed states I mentioned, Syria and Iraq, and what's anybody going to do about it? But Jordan has a very good military. And Jordan, uh, which is also a, a Muslim nation, but it is not allied with Iran. Uh, it is more allied now with the West, which is very strange historically. 
Jordan actually shot down some of the Iranian missiles themselves, which was a very dangerous decision for them to make uh, because they're taking the risk that terrorists are going to attack them for supporting Israel. Because what most people don't know is the vast majority of Jordan's population now are Palestinian refugees. Like most of the people that live inside the borders of Jordan come from Palestinian areas and their Palestinian descent. So they strongly hate Israel, support Hamas, support Iran. Right. So here, this this uh, headline shows you Jordan's Air Force shooting down Iranian drones in airspace. Uh, and what the Jordanian said is, look, you fly something over our airspace, it could hurt our people. We're going to shoot it down. Um, and that's probably what I would say if I was the ruler of Jordan also. Um, but it's also entirely likely that they're going to incur that wrath of Iran or some of Iran's proxies. Right. Uh, and I'm sure that the chatter today online, a lot of it is about what is Jordan doing siding with Israel. So this is kind of crazy. I'll show you this so you understand if you don't know history. This is a map of the Six-Day War uh, that was fought in 1967. Jordan fought against Israel four different wars between 1948 and 1973. And as I just said, their population is largely made up of Palestinians. Um, and so it is very shocking that Jordan actually kind of sort of sided with Israel um, because Jordan is very closely allied with the United States. Jordan's military was very sophisticated. Guess what? They fly F-16s. <laughs> they right. fly, they, they have weapons that come from the U.S. Uh, so anyway, that's Jordan's explanation. And then I want to just share with you this because it ties into biblical prophecy. It was interesting. The article that I read about Jordan shooting down Iranian rockets and missiles, uh, there was a quote in it from an Israeli journal journalist named Amir Tibon, and he celebrated, um, you know, Jordan teach it well teaching an important lesson he said to the israelis uh that that it's not about you know what side you're on it's about doing the right thing basically is what right. he was saying and then he made this statement science technology and alliances with the world these are the things that hold israel together and i read that article and it just jumped off the page at me like really like god is the only thing that yeah. holds israel right. together right and and you know, the average Israeli is very secular. They don't even really practice Judaism. They certainly don't recognize, um, you know, that Jesus was the Messiah who died for the sins of all the earth, including uh, the Jews. And, and so there is this kind of attitude in Israel. We did this. You know, we defended ourselves. We fought our wars. Uh, when the truth of the matter is, even just in the modern day of Israel, God's miraculous hand of protection has okay. intervened multiple times since 1948, including in the 1967 war. If you know anything about it, there's no reason that Israel should have won that war. Uh, God intervened truly on their behalf. And I was just kind of reminded today, you know, I think some people, when they hear us uh, presenting headlines, they think that we're taking sides. We're saying somebody is right or wrong. Um, we're just talking about current events as they fit into right. the context. Right. What's happening. Yeah, this what's, is what's this happening. Is, this is what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and we're also fitting it into the context of the Word of God and what we know from the Word of God is going to happen in the end times. Um, right. I've gotten a few letters about, well, you know, because um, I said that you can't be for sure that United States is an end times prophecy. Well, I, I don't want to get in a debate about that. Um, uh, I don't think it's clear, but I can tell you two nations that are in end times prophecy all throughout the word of God. It's Israel and Iran. Yes. Right. They're yeah. everywhere over and over yeah. in prophetic passages. Um, and so, you know, I, I just was thinking about why does God love his chosen people? Well, if you're a parent that's ever had a kid that's been disrespectful or ran away or is, is you know, been really cut you off or whatever, and, you know, they're out doing their own thing, you should understand that still just because them. your yeah. child is not doing good right now, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you don't still love your child yeah. right. and don't still have your child's best interest at heart, right? right. Um, and so anyway, I mean, this is a shocking statement that this guy made, but it's really not shocking because Israel has not yet come to worship the one true God. They have not accepted Jesus as the Messiah. So I want to just show you this picture, and I just 
I, I, here's the Iron Dome, right? Here's all the rockets coming in, and here's the Iron Dome coming up and stopping the rockets. One day, they're going to run out of rockets. Yeah. One day, Israel is going to be without a friend in the world. Right. We know this from, from the Bible, from the Word of God. Uh, one day, the United States and the UK and Jordan and nobody is going to be shooting down the missiles that are headed for Israel. Um, and this is a picture of Jesus. And, and the Apostle Paul was a Pharisee originally. I mean, he was, he was a Jew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, he wrote. And in Romans 10, he wrote this, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer for God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal, for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. God's heart has always been for the Jewish people to be saved just like the Gentile. That's his heart. And it's going to happen. And we know that. Uh, I mean, all throughout the word of God, God talks about his people are stubborn. Uh, I mean, all people are stubborn. It's it's our sin nature, right? right. It, it, so our stubborn sin nature is not excluded from the Jewish people. Um, there's pr- prophetic passages in Jeremiah 25. Uh, it also talks about in Second Chronicles 36 that the Jews continually mock the messengers of God, despised his words, scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. So you have Zechariah chapter 12. I want to I want to share with you because we've never shared this on the podcast. This is one of the passages that shows what God's plan is for the Jewish people. And just start in verse one. Okay, it says this message concerning the fate of Israel came from the Lord. This message is from the Lord who stretched out the heavens, laid the foundations of the earth and formed the human spirit. I will make Jerusalem like an intoxicating drink that makes the nearby nations stagger when they send their armies to besiege Jerusalem and Judah. On that day, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try and move it, but they will only hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, Read all the way down through verse 10 and 11. Okay, it says, on that day, says the Lord, I will cause every horse to panic and every rider to lose his nerve. I will watch over the people of Judah, but I will blind all the horses of their enemies. And the clans of Judah will say to themselves, the people of Jerusalem have found strength in the Lord of heaven's armies, their God. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a flame that sets a wood pile ablaze or like a burning torch among sheaves of grain. They will burn up all the neighboring nations right and left while the people living in Jerusalem remain secure. The Lord will give victory to the rest of Judah first before Jerusalem so that the people of Jerusalem and the royal line of David will not have greater honor than the rest of Judah. On that day, the Lord will defend the people of Jerusalem. The weakest among them will be as mighty as King David and the royal descendants will be like God, like the angel of the Lord who goes before them. For on that day, I will begin to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me who they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him, for an, for a firstborn son who has died. The sorrow and mourning in Jerusalem on that day will be like the great mourning for Hadad Rimmon in the valley of Megiddo. Yeah. And so that is uh, one of the most famous prophetic passages that talks about ultimately the salvation of all the Jewish people. Um, and, you know, it, it also talks about in that passage, though, that it, like most things, it's going to come through intense trouble and persecution and a hardship. Uh, so that's God's heart for the Jewish people. It's his heart for all people, that all men not perish, but come mm-hmm. to a knowledge of the truth. Uh, so we've got a few more things I just want to tell you about, about this event from yesterday. Um, so Iran state media took the position that they had dealt heavy blows to uh, Israel because they hit the Nejev air base. That's where the rocket, uh, the missile attacks that were launched against uh, the Damascus embassy came from. Um, so Chris and I were wondering, did they let those through just to give them a win right. or something, you know, because mm-hmm. it was a minor damage deal. Um 
the Israel War Cabinet approved a powerful response on Iranian soil. And this was this morning uh, that this announcement was made. And then everybody's kind of been waiting all day long to see what Israel would do for this following, these following reasons. So first, I got to show you this. Russia moved a supersonic missile warship to the Middle East after the Iran attack on Israel. We've been talking for uh, months about the fact that all of the, the, you see these proxy wars, there's a bigger war behind the scenes between the U.S. and Russia and China. Uh, And so Russia has been really uh, shocking to me, honestly, even as a student of this stuff, making very bold statements over the last week, right, Chris, about, hey, U.S., if you interfere, if you attack uh, Iran, and it, right. the, Russia is going to deem that an attack on Russia. In other That's words, correct. if you fight yeah. with my little brother, you got to fight with me. Wow. And I was, I don't know about you, Chris, I was really shocked to see them saying that. Those were very strong that, statements. Yeah, I've never, I mean, they've been saying a lot of strong stuff here lately, but they're very serious about that. So, I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you put the chip on your shoulder and say, dare you to knock it off, right? Of course, so. we knew from the Word of God that that was coming. It just yes. seemed impossible right. years ago that that could ever happen. It was nowhere near that. Like, how could these two align mm. themselves with each other? It just didn't make any sense. Yes. But God knows the end from the beginning, Yes, you know. So yeah. he said it would happen. Right. Yeah, and so we talked previously about the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, which is what Eve is alluding to. Uh, and yes, it seemed very far away to, to me years ago, but now you can see it in real time. Okay, this is playing out. Um, so I want to show you this map. The red are nations allied with uh, Russia and China. The blue are nations allied with United States, NATO, and Israel. Mm -hmm. This is what a potential world war would look like. So I wanted you to see this big map before I show you the next map. This is a closer look at the Middle East. Um, So if you see in red here, actually it's flipped because the red now is the U.S. sphere of influence over Israel. Jordan, as I just said, who shot down these Iranian missiles, uh, or the drones rather, I think. Saudi Arabia, which has been closely allied with the United States since the late 40s, and the UAE. The other nations are allied with Russia and Iran. Russia, Iran, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and of course the Gaza Strip. So you need to see that. Once again, here's Tom Cruise asking uh, to see the money. Show me the money, right? So... Now, this map, this shows you um, where the arms and military uh, hardware comes from for all the nations kind of in the Middle East in that area. And the green is less than 1% comes from Moscow. And the really dark red ones means over 75% of their arms come from Russia. So you see, once again, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Libya, their arms come from Russia. So when you see the money, you begin Mm -hmm. to understand why things are falling the way that they're falling. Uh, Germany's foreign minister said this morning that this attack puts the entire region at risk of plunging into chaos. Um, And here's the big news of the day. President Joe Biden warned Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel that the U.S. would not support Israel's counterattack on Iran. Uh, He told the prime minister of Israel, you got to win, take the win, after the IDF shot down nearly all the incoming drones and missiles, like we said, 99%. Um, And so, you know, here's the problem. It's a lose-lose situation now for uh, the prime minister and all of Israel because either they're going to allow this huge attack, unprecedented, directly from Iran, their sworn enemy, who states they want to wipe out the Jewish state. Right. Like they publicly say that for 40 years. Um, You allow them to attack you and not respond and look like a wuss and invite further aggression, which common sense— or you endanger um, alienating the United States, which is your financial backer, it's your military backer, it's where you get your weapons, it's where your Iron Dome in part comes from. Wow. So you can't win for the losing, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's an impossible situation. Right. 
uh, for Israel right now. Uh, and it puts them in a very, very serious position. Um, and it's interesting because you would think that this the attacks happened about 36 hours ago from the time we're recording this podcast. They still haven't responded. Wow. Uh, probably because when the U.S. said that, it gave them lockjaw and they're like, what do we do? Right. Got to make a decision. Got to make right. a decision. So it is a very serious situation. Obviously, we're going to continue to monitor it. Um, and we just, uh, you know, there's a, a scripture that says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I, I certainly pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the Middle East and the world. Um, but really, as I was praying about that this week, thinking about this situation that's developing Really, when I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, I'm praying that people would turn to Messiah and yeah. see Jesus because that's the only way. He is the Prince of Peace, and that is the only way to have true peace in the Middle East and in the world is for Jesus to be revealed to someone as their Savior. And I, that's right. my prayer for the Jewish people. Amen. So, as you can see, much is happening. And um, in all of it, Jesus is coming soon. Yes. And that's what matters, right? Um, that heavy things are coming on this earth and are, are right now, but it's nothing compared to what things are coming. And yeah. so there's going to be hunger and there's going to be war and there's going to be many things um, coming before the coming of the Lord. Right. And so it's no time to play, right? It's no time to mess around with competition in, in church. And it's no time to back down when you have the word of God and you have the answers. It's no time to run away. Right. It, yes. it, it's no time to not know the whole word of God. Like, and so I'm, I'm going to say even, you know, with, with the subject that we talked about before going into this, it still all ties together. Yes. Right. And, and that we all have to take it seriously. And so whether you've been the persecuted or you've been the persecutor, that you can repent. Amen. Right. Yes. You can repent. Like you, you, if you've been the bully, right? You've been the one with the drama. You've been the slanderer. God loves you too. Right. Yes. He really does. And it, it don't take, but Lord, forgive me. Yeah. And go and sin no more, you right. know? Come on. And if you make a mistake, get back up because maybe you've gotten you know, ingrained in these ways. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you that we're one body of Christ and that he loves us, that he loves us while we were yet sinners, you know? And so, you know, sometimes in my life, I, I just can't, I, I, I can't hold a, a grudge. I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad it hurts you more than any anyone else. It really does. And um and I and I always think no one's perfect. And I don't know how someone's living in this moment. Uh, if I know what they did yesterday, ten years ago, it just doesn't yeah. matter. And and it's not my business. Right. right, right. Um, I've got to focus on the Lord in my life and I've got enough with that than to try to be pointing the finger, right? At anyone else. Let's let's get together. I yeah. I need, we need the family of God. Come we are on. one body of Christ. Amen. And and we need each other and we need him. Right. And unless the Lord builds the house. Yes then they labor in vain that build it, the scripture says. And the only way the Lord is going to build that house, which is you and I, and which is his temple altogether, is if we do it his way. Right. Amen. Yeah. And so if you want to be a part of the body of Christ, um, if if you, you are in there behind bars, wherever you are, and you want to be, you know, people are always saying, I, I want to be part of Real Vida. You know, can I be a part? Can I represent here? Can, when I get out, can I look you up? Um, then you're going to have to love your brother. Amen. You know, uh, there's there's no room for hate. There's no room for competition. And there's no reason for it because yeah. we are all unique. We yes. are all loved by God. We, are, we all have our own story, our own way, our own ministry, our own call that all fits together in this, this big, let's get it done for Jesus um, kind of body and way that he's made us. It's amazing. Thank, 
thank God we don't all do the same thing. I don't rap, you know, let Ada do that, you know? Um, And when she spoke a little bit with with Chris when we were gone, she's like, man, that's harder than it looks, right? She's like, I'm glad we got you to do that, you know? Um, You know, I'm glad that we got my husband for the history. He's, you can see his mind, like he's in his element um, there when, you know, he don't don't have no lack for dates and times and countries and, you know, all of that stuff, you know, thank God Chris does what he does because- If he was a rapper, we couldn't get nothing done on the production. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like we God. have you, you our place. You know how to swing that chunkla. Come on. Yeah, chunkla. Yes. Yeah, that's, Big Jesus chunkla. That's your groove, baby. Hey. So, you know, we all have our own thing. And um, yes. God made us that way. Come on. And so don't, don't worry about well, what am I going to do? What does God call me to do? Because he has a call on your life and you're unique and you're special. The Bible says the gift makes room for itself. Amen. Yes. And he has his timing. Don't try to force it. Just, just do what you can every day around you and God will open new doors. Right. So we're going to pray. Let's pray all together. So, you know, Jamie Delgado over there um, and Estelle, he's a, a field minister. I don't know him real well, but I do know he's a field minister over there and Dragoo and crew and Brain and all the field ministers at Hughes and All Red and Dragoo. You know, there's so, so many, you know, um, you know, people that I know that are there. Yeah. Adam Palmer is there, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Twin, Nacho, um, you know, Big Mike, you know, Guy Graves. All Alex Arasso, you know, wherever yeah. you guys are, I know so many names, you know, so many of you guys um, pray with us. Will yes. you right now, like seriously, let's get together as the body of Christ and we can't grab hands, but we can grab our mic, right? Yeah, yeah. And you've got your tablet in your yes. hand and we're, we're all together united as one. Father, we come before you in Jesus name. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing in the body of Christ. Father, in COs that, that know you, that are new to you, those that are um, walking in you already, that know the word. Um, there was one where, while we were there this, this weekend uh, that, that knew the word. She was quoting scripture. Come on. While Jeremy was reading the word, she knew the scripture. Father, we pray together as one because the true real body of Christ, we want good for each other. We want to build each other up, not tear each other down. And yes, we need correction and we need rebuking every single one of us sometimes with the word of God. Father, to line ourselves back up with your word. But Father, I ask that you encourage your family, Lord, your kids, that they wouldn't give up. Those that are called to you, I know they're tired. Um, They're tired, God. I've been tired sometimes too. But Father God, I ask that you just pick us up and that we would learn where our strength is. And it's in eating your word. It's in worship. It's in prayer. It's in running to you. Father, it's in getting clean before you and getting focused again. So Father God, I ask that you raise up those that were about to drop out. That Father goes that, that maybe already did drop out would get back up. That, Father, they'd begin to work with those around them with what they can do. Open the doors for ministry. There's not too, there's never too many ministers. We need every single one of them for your kingdom. So, God, I ask that you do that by your power and by your strength. Heal your people. Heal your people. There are so many that say, I don't want to come because of what I've seen or what has happened. I was broken. I was chased out. Church people hurt me. A pastor hurt me. Somebody hurt me. But, Father, People don't always represent you right. And that goes for anything. So God, I ask that you remove that wall and that boundary um, that they have set in their lives and that they would allow you in, the real you, your spirit, your power. Father, your will, your strength. Father, we give you thanks in Jesus' name for all that you are doing. It's gonna get bigger. It's gonna get greater. And Father, every everything the devil meant for bad, you're turning it around right now for your good, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.